Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be going over Jeff Bezos and his famous car video. So check out this video. To my calculations, you yourself are worth somewhere in the vicinity of nine or ten billion dollars today. I only say that because I've got a follow-up question. Okay. What's with the Honda? <laughs> this is a perfectly good car. All right, Kirby. We see that when he was still worth ten billion dollars, he just had a Honda. So what do you got on this? First off, I think this is Alex National Anthem. Uh, make a lot of money and look like you're poor. It's my National Anthem also, but Alex, this is his This is his realm. But I think this is a problem in America. Um, the social media world, the world in general, before social media, everybody believed that because you have money, you have to show people you have money. And I always, you know, devise what is rich and what is wealth by the people that show off they're rich they'll have money until they you know stop working and then the money goes away think nba nfl you know sports athletes actors and things like that we have a history of them filing bankruptcy once their career is over wealth is people that can stop working and can still uh live the life continuously our goal here is strictly to focus on wealth and wealth is not a you know, number, millions, multi-millions, decamillions, billions. It's about the survivability of your life if you lose your W-2 job. If you stop doing what you're known for doing, can you still live the lifestyle that you live? And Jeff Bezos made a great point there is I buy for comfort. I don't buy for appeasing the masses. So that's the main thing that I, you know, dissected out of this video. Yeah, I know Jeff Bezos has a large car collection today, but I like that this video pointed out that even at his net worth of 10 billion, that's still the starting phase of Amazon. And it was important to him to conserve his personal gain and give back to the investors by reducing his lifestyle, basically. And now today, you know, Amazon is worth over a trillion dollars. So success definitely came out of that. Yeah, I remember I remember we did a short and people, you know, crucified me because I said you shouldn't buy a car that's more than one percent of your net worth. And they crucified me. They said, oh, you're wrong. You don't know anything about money. You don't know anything about finances. But that's the truth. He's worth and don't get it confused. Worth 10 billion and actually has 10 billion dollars in his bank account is two different things. But he's worth 10 billion and he's buying a car that is about what 20 at the time it's about 15 18 thousand dollars that is the epitome of what wealth looks like i mean we can go down the line we can go warren buffett buying a sixty thousand dollar house back in 1960 and still stay in his house when he's worth a hundred million dollars everybody believe in this whole concept of I have to make money and I have to show people that I make money. I have friends. I have people. I have people that work for me. They have bigger houses than me. But yeah, they making a lot of money now. But when crap hits the fan, they can't afford that lifestyle. And then me, I just, you know, I stay modest. They wonder why. Hey, why don't you live in my neighborhood? Why don't you, you know, buy the bigger house? Why don't you do all this? And then I always say, I don't have to show my wealth to know it. You know how much I'm worth, and I'm still, and you living in a bigger house than I am. So that's the whole epitome of it. My goal is, and everybody's goal is, to be able to survive. If a job called me today and said, hey, you're fired, will I still be able to live? Will I have to say, oh my God, I, I'm worried. I got to go figure out how I'm going to pay these bills. I don't want that kind of lifestyle. I want a lifestyle that whatever happens, no matter who's the president, no matter who's the politician, no matter if we're in a recession, can I still afford my lifestyle no matter what? It gives me comfortability, it eliminates stress, and it do everything that's important to me. Appeasing my next door neighbors, trying to keep up with the Joneses and something that never appeased to me. Everybody that I see do that, they're always in high stress mode because they always trying to keep up with the next person. Yeah, I like that this video points out the difference between wealthy and rich because, you know, we see all the time 
millionaires, rap artists, um, celebrities, whatever, influencers in their $100,000 cars and they're worth way less than Jeff Bezos is and was worth at this time. The key focus was that, you know, he's focused on Amazon and growing Amazon. He's reinvesting everything into that. And I mean, now that he's worth 160 billion or whatever, he, yeah, now he has, I guess, a big car collection, but that's still a minute percentage of his net worth. And right. it's still probably less than 1%, actually. So, you know, at, at that point, it doesn't really matter. Right. But, I mean, it's it's crazy. People making, you know, 30, 40, 50, hell, even $100,000 a year, they got the, you know, Mercedes. They got the Audi, whatever the high number is for Audi, that version of the car. They got Affinities and all this other stuff. And they're struggling. Like, they missed two paychecks, and they're in arrears. they worried about the repo man coming to take the car. You know, they lose their job. they worried about getting evicted. Most of these people that's quote-unquote rich or have, you know, above average income, they're one or two paychecks away from being in a poorhouse. So the only thing you got to do to avoid that is live below your means. I know that's a taboo subject. Nobody wants people to tell them what to do with their money. But if you live below your means and live comfortably, you don't have those stresses and worries that 99% of the world have of how I'm going to make it if something bad happens. I know people don't think about if something bad happens. Everybody thinks, oh, everything's going to work out perfect. But if the financial crisis, if the COVID pandemic and those things haven't told you things can change in an instance, you need to be prepared, not surprised, then I don't know what to tell people. But trying to keep up just to show that you're you're a part of the cool club is not the way to go because you're crushing your family's legacy. And what I mean by crushing your family's legacy, what I'm talking about is you're not setting up your kids or your grandkids or further down the line to set up for success because if you start doing it they believe that that's what they need to do so they're going to come out the womb and you know grow up and think oh i got to keep up with everybody else i got to do this got to do this and mind you they first job probably gonna be mcdonald's or something but they're gonna blow it they're not gonna have any financial literacy and then they're gonna keep that perpetual cycle of being in the rat race not having enough money at the end of the month and then you sit there and then you want to chastise them for what they're doing but what they're doing is taught by you but nobody wants to take accountability of themselves so i mean to wrap it up guys when you're investing and that's why i wanted to put this video up too i know i said to you curry but when you're investing everything's got to go towards your investments you got to be committed whether it's your business you're starting whether it's a portfolio you're trying to build You've got to be committed and just focused on that and the luxuries and all the fun stuff will come later on. But, you know, if your goal is to become wealthy, that that's the sacrifice. That's the price you have to pay is just be fully committed. But with all that being said, guys, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.